Hey, welcome back, guys. Power Book 2's fourth episode left us on the verge of some critical secrets being revealed and even acted upon as things progressed towards the mid-season finale. The feds are gaining on our favorite players, and as the pressure mounts up, along with the photographs, their resolve will have to heighten as well in order to survive everything pending. I'm here to break it all down in typical Top 10 WTF fashion. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. And lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. WTF moment number 10, The Whitman Dilemma. Lorenzo begins the episode by unveiling a mural dedicated to Zeke to the Tejada family, likely in hopes of keeping his own guilty trail covered indefinitely. During the family moment, the group is confronted by an unrelenting Detective Whitman, freshly downsized from the forest, yet still determined to put away the Tejada family matriarch. The two exchange opposing threats before Whitman retreats. Monet then brings the family up to speed on his latest efforts and keeps a less than punctual Diana exiled from the forthcoming meeting, a move that will bode well for the plans to come. WTF moment number nine, guns and butter. Obi meets with Tariq and the crew for another check-in slash re-up. After complimenting their current progress, at least I think he did, he presents the crew with a collection of illegal weapons to move. Though initially apprehensive, Obi reminds them of their initial promises to Noma and the lingering consequences if those assurances aren't met. WTF moment number eight, breaking and entering. Monet confirms with Davis about Whitman's latest visit and the two plot to feed him false information via Diana, the only Tejada clean enough to gain his attention and pull off the scheme. Monet raises the stakes by adding another caveat, breaking into the detective's home. By doing this, she plans to ready her next moves by learning all of the information held against her in Whitman's apartment and pays Davis handsomely to pull off the theft without him suspecting her involvement. WTF moment number seven, donations. Tariq meets with Councilman Tate in hopes of gaining dirt to use against RSJ that'll force him to sign with Weston Holdings. Tate is unable to assist him with the endeavor, but does help Tariq in another way by shedding light on Blanca's investigation against Tariq and Mecca's murder. True to form, however, Tate doesn't give the information away freely and charges Reek $5,000 weekly to the Tate campaign via Bitcoin, his private account. You gotta love that shady ass nigga. WTF moment number six, agents unite. Sax's lack of sex, coupled with Jenny's constantly ringing phone, heightens his suspicions towards her. After reaching her breaking point and needing to assuage her CI's conscience, Jenny relents and introduces Sax to her silent partner, Blanca Rodriguez. This news was anything but good in the eyes of Blanca, who was double-crossed by the rogue lawman in their last meeting. Though their history is less than glamorous, Sax agrees to set aside their differences in hopes of catching their common enemy, Tariq St. Patrick, but not without Blanca threatening to end Sax permanently if he crosses her again. WTF moment number five, I have altered the deal. Drew meets with Gordo Castillo, who ironically holds the same desires as he does and discovers a solution to their gun problems. Gordo connects Drew to a white supremacist militia looking for some heavy artillery. Upon making the deal, in search of respect from his family, Kang usurps his position and takes on the exchange for himself using Brayden as the front man. This move was necessary given the racist bigots that they were dealing with, but only served to increase the simmering tension between the two Tejada brothers. WTF moment number four. RSJ secured. Lucas and Tariq meet with RSJ, the former still lobbying for the billionaire's investment into Western Holdings. After the meeting goes awry, Lucas threatens to nullify Tariq's internship unless he secures RSJ's investment signature going forward. Being the resourceful little nigga that he is, Tariq propositions the wealthy prospect with the former Queen's Child Project site that Ghost left him via trust, which is also blocking RSJ's plan for a shopping center agreeing that the site is all his once he signs with Weston Holdings. Being tempted by the greatest selling point, self-interest, RSJ verbally signs off on the arrangement, simultaneously allowing Tariq to maintain his internship and even more importantly, his Wall Street drug operation. WTF moment number three, Redneck Rodeo. Braden meets with the white supremacist clan, pun intended, in order to complete the gun sales. Wisely evading the impromptu interrogation from the federally compromised outfit, Brandon drops the payment to Kane and Lorenzo directly following the deal. However, 
the racist collector follow Brayton back to the Tejadas Motel and attempt to rob them for the cash with the very guns they were just sold. The two Tejadas violently discard the racist with assistance from Drew and Gordo, who Lorenzo secretly enlisted for emergency purposes. Then, Karen recovers the guns and the money in the aftermath of the shootout. WTL moment number two, switch up 911. Detective Whitman is approached by an innocent seeming Diana, hoping to turn on her mother and assist the fiery detective in his onslaught against her. After agreeing to the family treachery, Whitman insists on breaking into the Tejada household to illegally obtain Monet's illegal books, as Diana is no longer allowed there. He's later shown breaking into the house under the guise of no one being there, but is unpleasantly surprised by a shaken Diana, who calls 911 to report the break-in. Then, and even more shockingly, an icy-faced Monet holds the world lawman at gunpoint and murders him after several pleas for his life. The Tejada matriarch then concocts an alibi on the spot to protect her and Diana, including forcing her daughter to swing in order to make it look official. Davis immediately advises his client with what comes next, seemingly dodging a major bullet, at least for now. In WTF moment number one, the secret revealed. Of the two secret murders being held this season, one more critical than the other, the one played in Lorenzo's Doom storyline is on the brink of exposure. Monet sifts through the documents procured by Davis's inside man against Whitman and discovers that Lorenzo's fingerprint was unearthed at Zeke's murder scene. After contacting Davis with the findings, Monet is interrupted by a compassion-filled Renzo, who's totally unsuspecting of just how numbered his days have become. We're on the precipice of one of the craziest mid-season finales to date. Some lingering thoughts before we end today's video. This episode is titled The Land of Opportunity, and it was brilliantly outlined by the obligatory classroom segment displaying the widespread differences between the classmates based on race, gender, and economic status. Ironically, Tariq ends up at the front of the class, on par with his white American counterparts, based on his privileged upbringing. It's an eye-opener not just for the audience, but for his Black contemporaries as well, including Effie and Bruchandria. The former's motivations could change based on these differences as things progress, and resentment could replace the current compassion she shows our series lead, despite hiding a major sin from him, a sin that she, in fact, committed. Towards the episode's conclusion, we were presented with a major Easter egg on Easter weekend, no doubt, in the form of Agent Angel Jr. Young, who we know from the original Power series as the nephew of Angela Valdez. The former student has now become a part of the DEA, and once becoming aware of the Junior St. Patrick and his crimes, will undoubtedly carry on the crusade of his mother against the St. Patrick family. I'll be doing something a little more extensive on this in a video to come. Diana's position in the family has been on ice since that iconic dinner scene that threatened to permanently split it. But her maneuvers towards the episode's conclusion may just be enough to keep her back in the fold. The wicked wisdom of Monet should be credited here. By coercing her daughter mid-scheme to be an accomplice in the murder of a cop, she essentially cemented her loyalty to the family by threat of blackmail. Thus, if Diana's L7 leanings ever enticed her to legally go against her flock, Monet would maintain the ace in the hole that'll get her daughter back in line. It's a critical strategy to highlight given our understanding of power at large, which is based on controlling the options of the personalities deemed most likely to fold under pressure. Diana has already chosen an alternative plan by attending Stansfield, but the dirt on her shoulder remains in the form of on-campus drug dealing and now murder. Touche, Monet. Kane and Lorenzo finally reached a common ground of sorts after Renzo saved his son in the name of family loyalty. But it may be too little, too late, now that Monet is on to Lorenzo's role in Zeke's murder. The elder Tejada may be enlisted once again to kill his father, only this time, it'll be for real. Right before the white nationalists hit on Lorenzo and Kane, hard evidence was created in the form of the photo snap directly preceding it, compromising Brayden and Renzo respectively. This is something that could potentially link the Tejadas to the bloodbath field ordeal and Tariq by association via Brayden. Also, one of the shooters got away, the one who was informing on the crew. This is going to have some serious repercussions for our players. And lastly, while we're on the subject of photos, following Jenny's meeting with Lauren, who's looking fine as hell these days while in hiding, might I add, who do you think the second mold could possibly be? Somebody at Stansfield definitely apprehended those photos for Jenny and it may be someone closer to the madness than we think. Someone who's newly attending the school and growing weary of her family's hold over her life. Or could it be someone else? 
At this point in the story, all signs point to Mr. Salim Assalamu Alaikum Shea Butter Allah. But what if there's another character unknown gathering information against Tariq on campus? Who do you think it could be? Drop me your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share it with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.